In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to extract from the dungeons in Dark and Darker. Now, the first thing is, if you're actually new, how do you extract at all? And in order to, to do that, what you have to do is wait till the zone starts closing. And once it gets to like the second or third to last ring, you'll start having what's called escape portals appear. And depending on what game mode you're on, if you're on the three-man game mode, there's also down portals, which will take you deeper in the dungeon. Uh, and it'll actually tell you if you're not in high roller, if you're in just normal game mode. Uh, it'll tell you at the top right when an escape portal appears. And so actually, you know, they, they've started appearing and they will look like this big blue stone on the ground and they'll come up out of the ground and you interact with them and then a portal appears and you jump through it and you get out. Now, that's like the basic of how to extract, but I'm going to get into more detail in this about how to extract, like as far as how to actually get out more consistently, either as a solo or as a team player. There's, it, there's nuance to each one. It's not really super simple on how to always get out and get your money and stuff, but I'm gonna try to help as much as I can. So right now, we're in the alpha playtest in February. So if you're watching this in the future, you know, it could be different with different game modes and stuff. But in the February playtest, uh, the Goblin Cage is brand new and the Forgotten Castle is the old version if you played the previous playtest. This The Forgotten Castle is groups of three and Goblin Caves is solo. So you would think it's easier to escape as a solo if you go to the Goblin Caves where it's all solos. And from my experience, uh, that's actually only true in certain scenarios. So, uh, cause I know how to extract is not necessarily a simple question cause the answer is different depending on what you want. Cause I could tell you right now, the easiest way to extract is to play the, like as a solo. Easiest way to extract as a solo is to go to the Forgotten Castle and play like a rat and hide in the plague. But I know there's a lot of people watching who they go, I don't want to play that way. So that's why there's a lot of nuance. So I'm going to try to go through this in a lot of different ways. So if you actually want to fight people and win fights and get out as a solo, then obviously you're going to go Goblin Caves. It's actually harder to get out, at least in the current iteration of it. But uh, if you just want to run in and actually fight people and get out as a solo, it's going to be your best bet. Now, if your main goal is to build wealth as a solo... Uh, once you get really good at listening to footsteps and things and getting good at sneaking around, Forgotten Castle is going to be actually better in a lot of scenarios because it's a lot easier to get around and there's a lot less enemies per room. Also, getting out is going to strongly depend on what class that you are playing as. So if you want to get out by playing as a rat, it's going to be a lot easier to do that as a rogue or as a cleric, or in some cases as a wizard, and especially as a ranger. So ranger, rogue, and cleric are the easiest to rat with. And then uh, barbarian, wizard, and fighter are going to be the hardest to rat with. So keep that in mind if you want to just build wealth by sneaking around and doing stuff. Now, if you want to do it by just fighting people and winning, uh, fighter, barbarian, ranger are all really good for just running straight into people and trying to kill them, basically. And then Wizard and Rogue, you can get by in their own unique play styles for actually fighting. So let's start off with the Goblin Caves to get into more detail about this. So Goblin Caves, it's going to be nothing but solo players. Starts off with nine solo players. And it puts you into this crazy catacomb with goblins and stuff. And the trick to extracting more consistently on this one is by being aggressive. It is much, much, much harder to extract on this game mode... Uh, on the solo game mode, Goblin Caves, it's much harder if you try to rat in this one for a lot of reasons. One is the density of enemies is way, way higher. So it makes it so you spend way more time killing mobs, which is why what you really want to do, if you can, is clear rooms as fast as possible. So that way you have more control of the dungeon. Because one of the big problems with the Goblin Cave, at least in the current iteration, this could change could even change in a few days knowing these developers. But uh, is that right now at least, there's only three escape portals when I made this video that will come up. Throughout the whole dungeon, only three will appear. And so because of that, it's extremely helpful to try to get control of the map as quickly as possible, play aggressive, and work your way in quickly. So because what happens is, the big problem right now is, this map is multi-layer. There's lots of verticality. There's first floor, second floor, and even third floor in some places, basically. And so what happens is you'll be down low somewhere and a portal will spawn down low. And then uh, you'll like you'll be up down low and you'll hear a portal spawn up high. And when that happens, then uh, you're kind of just screwed if you don't have control of the situation. Like, say this room, see all these goblins in here? 
if I haven't cleared this and I need to get through this room while there's plague and stuff going on, it's extremely unlikely to happen. That's why it's very important in Goblin Caves to clear as quickly as possible and to get your fights with the other players over with as quickly as possible. Always better to have control in Goblin Caves. Also, if you want to extract in Goblin Caves, unless you're a ranger or a wizard, I would stay away from those guys. Those are Goblin Mages, and they have this insane homing attack that's extremely difficult, almost impossible to dodge for most players. So, generally, if you see one of those, that room's just a no-go unless you're a ranged class, like, again, a ranger. Or you could even do it potentially as a cleric if you have the... Uh, skill, um, not judgment, but the other one, the one that does like massive AOE damage to all undead. Although I don't know, count, goblins might not count as undead, so that actually might not work. But uh, yeah, be aware of that. If you want to extract in goblin caves, definitely avoid them unless you can kill them from a range because they're way too powerful to deal with. All right, so regardless of whether you're playing on um, the solo dungeon or you're playing on the three man dungeon, you're going to want to watch the minimap at the bottom right, and you're going to want to try to get towards the circle whenever you reasonably can. But do keep in mind that going out into the zone in Dark and Darker, at least in the current iterations, is not all that dangerous, actually. So if you need to and you have the HP to spare, don't be afraid to just go deeper into the zone. Uh, it's really not a big deal. So definitely make decisions according to what's going on and get learning how to do that is something that you'll just need experience with and you'll get better with the more that you play the game another big tip for extracting consistently is try to get towards the center of the map a little bit early and the big reason for this is what happens near the end a lot of times if you sneak in is you'll have trouble finding portals but if you're in the zone when it gets about this small if you see at the bottom right the minimap if you get around this small if you're already in the zone you may actually hear a portal come up. It's a very obvious, like, stone grinding noise. And the last major tip for getting out of goblin caves is just learning the maps. Once you learn all the maps, you'll know where everything is. So if you hear one come above you, and you're like, oh no, the portal's above me, if you know the map, you'll know how to get there. And that's really one of the biggest things for goblin caves, because there's so much verticality. If you hear one uh, come up, and you don't know how to get up to it, then it's game over. There's no way you're going to get out that at that point. All right, so here's what an escape portal looks like. Since I'm already in the zone, it just popped up right in my face. And uh, yeah, you see the top right, one person escape portal appeared. This is the second one to appear. And now I can get out of here. Successful escape. First try, actually. But like I said, it's important to try to... You can play out of the zone. and You can even play in the plague. But once there's only like two circles left or so, two or three circles, you really want to try to get into the zone so you can be the you can hear when the portals come up and you can secure them, especially in goblin caves. Control of the goblin caves is massive for extracting consistently. Now let's take a look at the Forgotten Castle. Now this is where we have two choices. Either you're playing with a team or you're entering this as a solo. So the way this goes is if you're playing as a team, you the the absolute best way to play it if you're good enough is like how the goblin caves was if you're playing with three people or with two other people i guess uh you want to you know secure the zone you want to have control you want to clear the rooms fast you want to be aggressive and you want to have, just have control as a three man uh it's a lot harder to sneak through the plague than a three man unless you're like three clerics or something anyway but if you're playing as a solo then it'll be different. So I don't even need to explain the three-man strategy for extracting consistently in the Forgotten Castle because I basically, it's the exact same thing I just showed you in Goblin Caves. But now let's go to the Forgotten Castle as a solo. So as a solo, uh, if you want to just fight people, you have to get insanely good at the game to be able to consistently kill three-mans by yourself and get out. So realistically, if you're going to the Forgotten Castle to get loot and extract as a solo, it's better to play as a rat. And so if you don't play as a rat, it's better just to play Goblin Caves, if, assuming they keep that game mode and have everything balanced the way it is right now in this play test. All right, so the Forgotten Castle. Uh, so generally, like I said, if you want a rat, the best class is Cleric, Rogue, and Ranger. Those are the best, followed maybe by like the Fighter or something, just because the Fighter can use a bow, and that that's, that's nice. Uh, and then Wizard probably after that, and Barbarian's not really good for sneaking around and ratting all that much, no self-heal or anything. So in this map, if you want to extract consistently as a solo, it's two ways to do it. If you're playing as a rogue, uh, you can just run in and do whatever you want because you can hide. And that's really useful. You get really good at being sneaky, you can just run in and hide. If you're playing as a cleric or a ranger, then you want to play on the fringes of the map, like where the zone is. And you want to not be afraid to enter the zone. Maybe if you have money, you know, bring a couple potions or something. 
and then uh, just take zone damage and come in whenever you need to come in. And don't worry too much about it. The zone doesn't hit super hard unless they change it dramatically. Um, so yeah, then you'll just, on the Forgotten Castle, you're just going to uh, loot up. You're going to see uh, the minimap at the bottom right. Because of where it is, I'm actually, if it was, what I'll what I'd probably do is I'll loot this room. And as a solo, you're going to always be listening. Make sure you have sound up, have headset on, whatever. And listen for other noises. And if you hear other players, you want to just stop what you're doing and just wait. And ideally as a solo, in order to escape more often in a three-man, you know, Forgotten Castle mode, is to turn off torches and stuff. So that way, if they do come into the area that you're in, they won't actually see you. Also, keep in mind, if you have potions on your belt, they'll glow in the dark. So that's actually relevant when trying to be sneaky uh, in this kind of scenario. But generally, when you're playing as a solo in Forgotten Castle, like I said, uh, you'll always want to be the one that hears them and not the opposite. If they hear you and it's an aggressive three-man, they'll come hunting for you till they find you. So always, always, always be sneaky, be stealthy, take your time, play slow, and uh, move in when you actually need to. And, you know, you could even do things at, in this mode if you want to extract more often, like right now. What I could do is I could uh, get in a position where um, I could, like, well, this is a kind of weird one, but if I, rangers can't break boxes. If I wasn't a ranger, I'd break all these boxes, and then I would just hide, like, back in the corner. And if they came in, they'd see all the stuff broken and open, and maybe they wouldn't notice me. But ideally, they won't even come in here, and I'll just hang out, like, right here. Or another thing you can do is this door opens over this way, and I could hang out here, but this door is kind of close to the wall. So, you know, but it, it's just be sneaky, guys. It's just be sneaky. Don't get caught. Don't be seen. Uh, you can kind of peek through little, like, gaps like this and stuff. Listen for things. And come in slowly. Take your time. Be careful. And eventually work your way in. Now, in this particular case, I'm playing as a, range, uh, a rogue. So I can kind of just do whatever I want here. Because I can just hide and I'll de-aggro enemies. So I'm actually going to go peek over into here. It looks like nobody's been in here. You can close doors behind you to separate yourself from enemies. And I don't know if, that, if that's supposed to break the door that he did that, but it, I think it just graphical glitched there. But yeah, so you can go in as a rogue, and then I could just, like, go here and hide. And they'll all just de-aggro, and I'll just hang out. You know, a rogue's the easiest one for beginners to just do what I'm doing here. Uh, clerics is a lot more about playing in the plague and listening, like, intensely. But yeah, so we just hang out back here, and we loot what we can. Honestly, if I want to, I could just clear this room, depending on what class I am, and just loot everything. And then uh, just keep working my way in. Another big thing in order to extract more consistently is learning all the enemies, all their attack patterns, how to fight every enemy and consistently beat them. Learning that is really going to help you. There's tricks for every single enemy and hopefully at some point I'll have time to actually make a full guide for that and then you'll be able to show you how to beat every single enemy in the game without taking damage. Although there are some cases where that's not exactly easy or possible depending on what class you are and what it is you're trying to kill but there's always a strategy for every enemy that at least like there's some kind of strategy for every enemy that at least with terrain advantages and things you can you force certain things so here we got the zone finally coming in so on this particular map the way this is playing out now is uh i can actually stay in this room and be safe from zone damage so I'm just going to stay in here, and I'm going to clear some of these mobs, if I can. Also, mobs can hurt each other, so they all just damage themselves, made that easier. But yeah, so now I'm just going to hang out here, listen for other people, and try not to get snuck up on. And be the one sneaking up on other people, and looting things, and collecting money. Like, I've already got over 100 gold worth of wealth from those throwing knives and things. And I could just dive into the plague now and uh, get a little bit more loot, which I, I probably will do here in a sec. All right, so you can see our first three-man portal has already appeared. Don't forget you can peek through these grates in order to see what's going on in the next room. Has it been cleared or not? It looks like that door on the far end has been opened, so somebody has been through here. So I'm going to show you a way you can beat these skeleton archers, which will make it a little bit easier to extract. There's actually a, different, a few different ways you can do it. One is you can stand away and then wait for them to shoot, and then go in for a stab, and then wait till they shoot, and then walk sideways. Then they'll act from a distance, they won't hit you. 
which is really hard to do in this tight hallway. Or you can also hang around a corner and then come out and stab at them. That's like there's, there's, those the skeleton archers are gonna be the biggest pain in the butt for you if you're a, rain, a melee class. All right. So uh, one thing you gotta do is be a little proactive if you don't hear anyone and try to clear when you can. So that way you don't get in crunch time later on and then have nowhere to go, basically. So right here, we have an escape portal, but we have a skeleton mage guarding it, which is very awkward to deal with. Uh, as a rogue in particular, I don't really have much I can do. What I could do in this scenario is I could just jump down and try to open the portal before he kills me with two fireballs, which I actually think I would get away with, to be honest with you. But, uh, I'm gonna try this, I'm just gonna not do that for the sake of this video. But I'm pretty sure I could get away with that, actually. I could just jump down as a ranger. Or, he could just cheat and shoot through the wall like that. I was gonna say he was gonna shoot himself. But, uh, things can get a little buggy sometimes. All right, well, either way, I could escape now if I wanted to. Because now I could just jump down there and I could use the escape portal. Just like the other map, it's important to learn the map and the changes with each playtest so that you can more easily navigate the map. So, well, I could just get out now uh, just for the sake of learning. You can see right now where the zone is. Say these portals were not here and I didn't have a way out. I would have to do something else now. So what I would do is I would try to work my way towards the center one way or another. So I can go this way and try to find a way to fight the skeleton archer, or I could go the other way and try to get through the other room. So in this case, I'm going to fight the skeleton archer, which is a really scary idea because that's a red one. But as a rogue, it's a little bit easier because I'm so fast. Uh, if you're, oh god, there's a guy. All right, well there's another player. I think it was a rogue. So now, I'm in a weird spot. So, yeah. So if you're in this scenario, you'd be in big trouble now. So, I don't know that I'd necessarily want to fight that guy. So I would go this way. And I would try to head around this way. There he was. Now we're going to go this way. I'm going to leave this door open. And I'm going to run through here. I don't know if there's spikes in here or not. So I'm going to crouch walk. And now, I'm already almost in the zone again. Got to know your rooms. In this one, if you go in the center, a bunch of mummies spawn. So you definitely don't want to go up to that big chest. Well, a mummy spawn. So it's probably good if I clear this. So that way he doesn't just come up behind me when I'm trying to sneak around. So we got another blue portal. So you see if you can just maintain zone presence without being, getting too aggressive, without getting spotted then you get a lot of options in order to get out as a solo. So that's why, in my opinion, this map is actually easier to escape as a solo if you're willing to play like a rat. Then, like, your chances of escape are very, very high, and it's really not that dangerous then. So I'm going to open this, and this will be a good example. So now I grab a bunch of stuff real fast. I guess someone already spawned all these mummies. All right, so we got a big bunch of loot, jumped through the portal, and we're out again. First try on both these runs. So yeah, if you follow those tips and stuff, even though there's three mans out there, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, you just got to play safe. You got to be sneaky. You got to listen. Keep your, uh, you know, ears open. Keep your eyes open. Peek through doorways and stuff, and just don't get caught off guard. And uh, it's really not that hard once you play the game enough. So then I'd get back. I'd look at all this stuff, and uh, let's see how much money that is from that run. So we'll go over to the armorer, and we'll just sell all the random gear we got. We also sell oil lanterns. By the way, oil lanterns are worth a ton of money, if you didn't know. So, uh, I can't even sell it all right now, because I can't unequip them. Put these on. And then, the game's kind of buggy right now, but sell those. Make a deal. And then go to the collector and sell all the jewelry that we got. Okay, and then right there, that was 215 gold on that run. So, easy. It's that easy, guys, in order to make a bunch of money. Or maybe I had some from the last run in my inventory. I didn't put it away. I don't remember, actually. No, I put it away. Yeah, so that was 215 in one run. So, yeah, if you needed to know how to extract or have a you know better odds of extract, how to extract more consistently, or just what the portal looks like. 
if you want to know how to go down, it's the exact same thing, but they're red portals. Um, but yeah, so that is how to extract or escape more often, more frequently. Those are tips that I have for you in the different game modes, different ways. Uh, so if you watch the whole video straight through, hopefully it helped you out. And now you have a better idea of how to escape. And also this video helped you out and you want to help me. Um, all you have to do is you can just go to my steam page for art gallery simulators, the game I'm making and just wishlist it. It's free to wishlist it for me. And it'll just notify you whenever I release it in March or I might delay till April. It's a good game where you get around art gallery and uh you start from slums you upgrade you get you know upgrade your store move things around you know buy art sell art eventually you get an art museum and stuff that's the goal for the game uh and yeah if that sounds interesting you wish list it, or if you just want to help me out wish list it. you don't have to buy it later it just helps the algorithms if you wish list my game i'll link this in the description of this video below the first paragraph but there you have it guys that's my tips i've played like over 100 hours if not over 200 hours of this game in the play tests already i literally know life for the play tests so uh, hopefully my knowledge helps you out and hopefully now you'll be able to extract more consistently and build wealth more easily in Dark and Darker.